not up to this this morning, are you? Because <laughs> it is, of course, morphing time. So, ladies and gentlemen, please, Glasgow, give a massive round of applause to our Power Rangers guests. We have Steve Cardenas, who plays Rocky. We have Catherine Sutherland, who plays Catherine Cat Hillard. And Nakia Baris, who plays Tanya. Right, he's, even, he's even doing his stunts already, though. He's stunt, okay, stunt just wake me up when it's over, guys. Thanks. All right. Hello, everyone. Oh, I'll find, I'll find, I'll sit up. You look like you're getting comfortable over there. I, it was kind of comfortable, actually. It's kind of nice and, it's kind of the nice oh, little bit this in my living room. Good morning, everyone. How are you today? That was, that was sad. What time is it? It's morphin' time. That wasn't good either. Let's try that again. What time is it? Uh, it's time to go get some coffee. That no Zords would appear if they did that in real life. They're, they're, they're yeah. lipsy. No, we're all gone. No, sorry, Sodja. So, thank you very much for joining us in Glasgow. Thank you for all travelling to be here with us. Now, Power Rangers is still like, as iconic now as it's ever been. It continually keeps evolving thanks to like Boom Studios comics and everything. So, taking a trip back, how did you all get involved in the show? And at the time when you got your roles, were you aware of how big it was and what you were getting into? Did you have to do any research for it? Um, yeah, it, it, well, I was very aware of the show because um, I was a martial artist ever since I was a young kid. Um, it's kind of how I got the part because uh, when they were holding auditions, they were looking for people that knew how to do martial arts and gymnastics. I was not any kind of an actor of any sort. I had never done any acting of any kind. Um, so they were straight up looking for martial artists. So when I went and tried out, um, that's kind of how, how it happened for me. And then the, the acting came as like an on-the-job thing. But I... I was uh, very familiar with the show, because anything back then in the 90s that was martial arts on television, I watched it. So if there was a Chuck Norris you know, movie, or if there was a Bruce Lee movie, or any kind of kung fu movie out, or Jean-Claude Van Damme, I watched them all. And I was obsessed. So I was very familiar with Power Rangers, and uh, so when I heard about the audition, I said, well, I'll just go give it a shot. Um, but So I knew the show was popular, but... Um, I didn't know in what capacity I was going to be on the show. I just thought maybe they were adding some cast members or something like that. I didn't know that I was going to be like replacing the original Red Ranger, and you know, so that part was kind of a little bit nerve wracking for me. You know, it's like there's a lot of big boots to fill for sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, uh, it was uh, it was quite a unique experience. Um, I don't know your guys' audition process were probably longer than than mine. Mine took a place over four days. That was it. Yeah. So, um, so they'd filmed the first movie, um, which Steve was in, uh, in Australia. Right, right in Sydney. And uh, when Amy Jo decided she wanted to leave the show, they were casting in, in America, and I believe Canada too, and then they decided to come to Australia. And so I didn't know what Power Rangers was. It wasn't even showing in Australia at the time. Um, it was just a kid's show that I was auditioning for, and I did a scene, and then I had to do a martial arts routine. Um, and I was a dancer, I was not a martial artist, so let's hope that doesn't surface. <laughs> and, um, and then I met the producer, so I had three auditions. And um, I, like Steve, I didn't know I was replacing anybody, I just thought I was an addition to, to a cast that, of a show that was already airing. Um, so I didn't actually find out until, I think till I even got on the show that I was replacing Amy. So it was a little nerve-wracking for me as well. I guess mine was the longest auditioning process then, because I had five auditions. I was in college at the time. I wasn't aware of what Power Rangers was. I didn't know that I was replacing anybody. I think they just kept that hush-hush for anybody that was replacing anybody. Um, I just know that th they told me that I needed to wear yellow. So I wore yellow. I did a monologue. I did not have to do martial arts. They did ask if I um, was a dancer. I was a dancer as well. And I learned, you know, different fight techniques being on the show. But I had the first audition. It was probably a couple of hundred. I got a call back. It was down to probably about 40 or so. Then I got a third call back. It was down to seven. Then I got a fourth call back. It was a screen test. And that's when I met Blondie here. <laughs> uh, my screen test was with Kat. And then I had a final interview where it was down to two of us. And then I ended up blessing for the role. But no, I wasn't familiar with Power Rangers when I auditioned. But I'm very grateful to be on the show, to have been on the show. And if, you, if you're coming into a franchise and you're not aware of it, how quickly did you, did you have to go and do any research about it once you got the role? 
and did you, and then how quickly did you become aware of how popular it was? Because in the late 90s and even now, it was f phenomenally popular, is one way to describe it. How quickly did you become aware of how popular it was for you two? For me, it was uh, at the premiere of the movie, because when I came on the show, they were doing a press tour for the movie, so I didn't meet them until I'd been in the country for like three weeks. So uh, I went to the premiere, and when we stepped out of the limousine, it was just like, they were like rock stars. Everyone was going crazy, and I went, this well, is what a was kids interesting show, about that's crazy. That was that like a lot of famous people were coming to the premiere of the movie because they were bringing their kids, you know? So, because like, you know, so there was a lot of interesting people that were at the premiere. So I was like, these guys are all, I've watched these guys forever and now they're coming to see me. And that they had that cool. huge carnival after the movie. Yeah, where, right? yeah, it was really cool. So it's kind of a shock for me. <laughs> it's like, this is a children's show, you know? I don't know if I knew the capacity until actually after leaving the show and I start doing Comic Cons. Because when we did the Turbo movie, um, obviously it wasn't as big as the first, the first movie. Um, we did have a red carpet event, but I, it sounds like the first movie had, it was like over the top and grandeur and everything. It wasn't until I started doing Comic Cons that I realized how popular, really popular Power Rangers um, is and still is today. Um, having fans come to the table and tell me, how Power Rangers has changed their life and how it, it helped them in school with bullying and getting into martial arts and the life lessons that they've learned, which has been just an extraordinary blessing. Yeah, I think with the with the uh, with Comic Cons kind of all starting around the same time that social media started beginning big too, you know, mid 2007, 2000, you know, or probably around that time is when you know Facebook started to emerge and and MySpace, and then later on Instagram and stuff. And before that, there was never really a way for us to connect with the fans. When we were on the show, there wasn't even internet back then. You know what I mean? Used to get like, that's how long, away, long ago it was, folks. There wasn't even internet, really. So there was, and everybody was five or six years old. There was no, there was no connection with you guys. Now that you're all grown up, and we have this, this, this way of meeting one another, and we have social media to communicate with each other on, um, we have really been able to embrace our fans in a way that we've never had the chance to be before. You know, we were always very isolated from our fans. I mean, the most we would ever get would be fan mail, which would be snail mail, you know, the regular letters that kids would write us. Um, and that was pretty much the only correspondence that we had. Um, but yeah, so I, we didn't really know, you know, that, that there was so much of a fandom and still so much of a fandom to this day still we started doing cons. Yeah, so, yeah, you're right about that, for sure. And a lot of shows now only run for kind of like 12 episodes, some at max out at 24, but Power Rangers has always had an insane level of episodes per season. What was that like to kind of film, or what was your kind of daily schedule like for that? Because it must have been exhausting. Yeah, we never got a break. We, there was no hiatus for us, it was continual. It was like soap operas. Do they have soap operas here? Oh, yeah. At uh, Brookside, all right. Well, those are come on every day, right? I mean, those are the show, it was, that's how our show was too. Back then, our, it, was, it aired every single day, and so we were constantly having to crank out episodes. We never got a break. We did about ten episodes. Excuse me. We did three episodes in ten days. My first season was 50, we did fifty episodes per season. Um, I didn't know any different because it was the first television series that I had ever done. I was just blessed to work because I was, yeah. again, I was in college at the time and I was still going to school while I was on Power Rangers. I don't know how God got me through, but I did. <laughs> I graduated and everything. But um, yeah, we were filming from like 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day, Monday through Friday. Yeah. Pretty intense. Filming and then we'd have to go and do ADR, which was all the, the voiceover work for the helmets when we have our helmets on. Um, we had to go and do voiceover work for that, so yeah, yeah, it's crazy. But how did you manage to keep your energy going then? Because it must have be, because it's kind of an intense role that every episode has to be. So you've got to keep that same energy level all throughout every single 50 episodes you do. How did you manage to keep that same energy level constant? 20 years old. <laughs> yeah. Babies. Well, you know, all the energy that. in the we world. Were, we were young. <laughs> and, the, and the money, I mean, they were paying us like, you know, Six hundred dollars a week or something. <laughs> I was kidding. <laughs> no, uh, uh, I think it's just like anything else. Like you can get used to it. I mean, you know, um, you know, think about people that work 
build, you know, laying, you know, streets all day or building homes all day or whatever. It's, it just it is. It becomes your job, and you just get used to it. You know, so you get used to anything. And it's not like the conditions were horrible. Oh God, we have to be in, on on TV all day in front right. of the camera. Oh, this is so awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that. I was like, we were filming a television show. It was like I was going to. I was in film and television at, at, at UCLA. And so to be able to be blessed with work before I graduated, I was like, woo, I'm over the moon. Yes, you thank you. And Naki, how did your kind of um, college mates react? Because there you are, you're going to be, a, you're being a student when you can, and you're also on a hit television series. How did they kind of react to that? Your college mates react? They were very supportive, very proud to have a, a Power Ranger friend. I remember at my graduation, they actually announced that when I was walking across the stage. The Kia Maurice, the Yellow Power Ranger. It was pretty funny. It was pretty funny, but it was very nice. Yeah. But did you not wear yellow robes or anything or any yellow on you during your graduation at all? Yellow at my graduation? Yeah, in any form? No. <laughs> no, no yellow. Because as you know, on the show, we had to wear the colors that we were. So I was yellowed out. Yellow barrette. Yellow hairbands, yellow shoes, yellow. I have, I still have yellow snakeskin pants that cannot fit on my body, but I still have them. <laughs> Everything was yellow, so no. For a graduation, there was no yellow for me. And after, I mean, this may sound like an odd question, but after the show is finished, were you like, I said, I'm all yellowed out, I'm all picked out, I'm all ready now? Did you avoid any of those kind of color clothing for a while? I didn't wear pink for years. I like it now, but. And they always gave me the. Uh... The sleeveless plaid shirts, you know? And it was funny because when I did the Super Ninja Steel reunion episode, the one that came out in, uh, like last year or whatever, <laughs> they put me in the same lumberjack outfit again. I'm like, come on, everybody else looks modern and they put me basically in like 90s plaid clothes again. I'm like, just because I was on the show in the 90s, it's modern now, it's all present day. You can give me some more fashionable stuff to wear. Back. No, it wasn't is back. totally back. It's I was back. I wasn't back. Plaid going on here. <laughs> no, he looks great in the plaid, but I'm telling you, I, I did not. <laughs> Everyone else had like really like the skinny jeans, and I had like you know, I I had the big combat boots and the, and the big baggy pants and the big lumberjack sh sh or whatever. Anyway, my point being, you know, they could have been a little bit more creative. They had the budget too put me in a better outfit. Actually spoken to each other in that episode too. That would have been interesting. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> right. We worked together on what, a hundred episodes and and we on in that episode we never spoke to each other no, the whole time. Like, yeah. Oh it's good to see you, Rocky. No. Yeah, nothing. How many of you saw that anniversary episode? Twenty five year anniversary. Two, three, can I get a four, five, 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 six, seven, eight, okay. About uh, ten you people. You didn't miss much. It was fun to go back on the show, but all the cool stuff, they cut it all out. <laughs> all the cool stuff that we did is all cut out. So, Such as? Huh? Such as? You said you cool stuff that they cut out. Is there anything you can tell oh, us about? I, I mean, I don't remember. There was a lot of stuff that we did that um, wasn't... It was like, yeah, some fight scenes and things like that that were all cut out and not, so... Well, if you haven't seen it, it's on Netflix. So no, you can is it on see Netflix? It, now. The, it is the, on The Netflix. reunion episode? Enjoy it. If you have 22 minutes that you don't mind never getting back, go ahead and watch it. No, I'm just kidding. It was fun. I enjoyed it, of course. Okay, well, we're going to open the questions out to you. So if you'd like to ask questions, stick your hand up. And I can already see one person's hand went up really, really quickly here. Red Ranger's got a question right there. Hey, y'all. Hello. Uh, I've got two questions. Uh, first of all, R.I.P. R.I.P. Robert Axelford. Oh Zed. yeah. R.I.P. Yeah. Robert Axelrod. Lord Zed. Yeah. Yeah. When that I heard that news, I was crushed. Like, yeah. Cheers for that. Thanks, mate. And uh, second question: If you could be any other Power Ranger with any sword, who would you be? Hey, what? I couldn't hear what. <laughs> what any? What sword would we be? If you could be any, any. If you could be any other Power Ranger and have any other sword, what would it be and why? I think I'd want to be the White Ranger. I, I, like, I, I like think I'd Ranger. want to be the Red Ranger, manning the Red Dragon Thunder Zord. I think that'd be. Oh wait, that was. That was you. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, how how can you top that one? Unless you're the Green Ranger. No, well, well, that's the only other one that White would Ranger probably. Was cool. White the Ranger. Falcon. Was cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't know. I could be the pink Zeo Ranger. That would be, be a lot. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'd be the yellow Zeo Ranger. Oh, yeah, that was you. Thank you for the question. It's not fair. We didn't really answer his question, no, though. We were just being kind of sarcastic. Yeah. But, no, you know what? Um, you know, actually, what, what series I like outside of the series that I was on? I like Time Force, actually. And we're actually really good friends with all that cast from Time Force. They're a lot of fun. And uh, we do a lot of conventions together. And they're a riot. So I like, their, I like their season. And I like their concept of the time travel and stuff. So that was pretty cool. Uh, that would probably be one of the series that I would like to be a part of if I could have been. Good question. Okay, go ahead. And we're off over here. Okay. Question for a young man. How does it feel to be a Power Ranger? Accent is so cute. Say it again. <laughs> How does it feel to be a Power Ranger? Accent. It's great. Great. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, oh, I liked it. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. 